Welcome to Safe Handling and Mobility Online Learning. This video is intended to supplement other core presentations and focus on bed mobility and associated equipment. Activities involved in bed mobility contribute to musculoskeletal injuries. Examples include repositioning a client in bed with rolling, boosting, going from a lying position to sitting, and transfers. The focus of the next slides will be on using the bed features and equipment available. It is important to make sure the resident's functional abilities are assessed during the physical portion of the PACE assessment and their match to the task about to be completed and the resident participates in the task as much as possible. Always ensure you are using the correct number of people to do the task or ask for assistance when needed and communicate with each other to work as a team. Always consider how the bed can be used to help with repositioning and transfers. If you don't know the features of the bed you are using, be sure to ask. Adjustability is your best friend. Make the work environment fit you, not you to it. Bed features make it easier to transfer, roll a resident on their side, provide care, boost them up, and also helps with making the bed. These features can decrease unnecessary bending and overextending. What is the proper bed height for providing care? Hip height. If two staff are required to assist with bed mobility and there is a height discrepancy, how do you determine the proper bed height? Adjust to the shorter staff member's hip height. Tall people can get shorter by squatting, but short people shouldn't stand taller on their tippy toes. This is not a stable position. Make bed mobility easier with equipment like slider sheets, J-Row Easy Rest, transfer sheets, and transfer belts. Are you familiar with any or all of these items? Over the next series of slides, we will be reviewing each piece of equipment in detail. What are sliding sheets? Sliding sheets are a user-friendly moving and handling solution. They are a design system of a base sheet and a draw sheet that work together to make positioning and transferring easier for the residents and caregivers. They can be used both independently as a base sheet or as a set using a base and draw sheet combined. Why use sliding sheet systems? There are many benefits for residents. This system allows residents more independence to turn and move themselves in bed. Smooth sheets can minimize friction under pressure points, therefore reducing pressure sores and shearing damage to the skin. They can be used in conjunction with pressure relieving mattresses without affecting the pressure qualities of the mattress. Sheets can stay on the bed, enhancing comfort for the user, reducing the amount of handling required to reposition, transfer, or turn. We understand the soaker pad is commonly used to reposition a resident in bed. This is not a recommended practice because it was not designed for repositioning and therefore not placed appropriately to move a resident with ease. Soaker pads go under the pelvis, not the trunk like the slider sheets, thus requiring a lift. Also, the friction between the pad and regular sheets adds extra resistance resulting in effort needed by caregivers to move the resident. The benefits from a slider sheet system. They can be used with residents with varying degrees of mobility. They reduce the physical strain on the caregivers when turning and moving those they care for in bed, therefore helping prevent injuries, and they save time. If the resident is not a good candidate for the slider sheet system, then the transfer sheets might be an option. Some features include ultra low friction flat sheet design made from strong nylon material, used to aid caregivers in repositioning, turning, and transferring the resident in bed. They can be used to move the resident out of confined spaces, such as when they have fallen in the bathroom or any other tight space. Use the transfer sheet to move them out into an area where a portable lift and sling can be used. They require two people to be applied and used, and they are not a lifting device and cannot be left under the resident. J-Row Easy Rest. We are going to answer these questions. Which residents can benefit from the use? Other benefits from use? And who can use? Which residents can benefit from use? 
Residents unable to lay on their side because of physical limitations secondary to such conditions as multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, stroke, or obesity, among others. And residents who can be resistive, pushing back excessively during care activities, for example, individuals with dementia. Other benefits of use. There's an increased safety for staff as this reduces the strain and effort required to reposition and or maintain a client resident on their side. It creates optimal access for staff to perform care, reduces the frequency of repositioning required to provide care, and is simple to use, transportable, and easy to clean. Using the JRO Easy Rest reduces the sustained extended arm posture to hold a client and is more comfortable to the client. For example, there's no fingers or nails in their back. We are seeing a spike in wrist-related injuries in healthcare. Holding an individual inside position over an extended period of time can lead to wrist soreness. The JRO Easy Rest also lets you be hands-free from time to time, allowing for much needed postural breaks and freedom to move while providing care. Who can use the JRO Easy Rest? One person can use it, however, it does not replace a staff member when two people are needed to provide care or reposition a client. A transfer belt is a device used to assist residents to transfer or mobilize those who have mild to moderate balance problems. The transfer belt wraps around a resident's waist and provides staff with a safe hand grip for assisting a resident. It's important to remember, the belt is not intended to be a lifting tool. If you see the belt is running up in the back, adjust it to fit snugly, and if this continues, a reassessment is required as you may be lifting. Why use a transfer belt? To protect the resident and staff from injury, to allow good control of the transfer, and to maintain dignity and integrity of the resident during the transfer. How often are you grabbing a resident under the arms or by the back of the pants? This is sometimes referred to as pits and pants. Who requires the use of a transfer belt? Any resident who needs assistance from one or two people. Look at the photo to see how the worker is holding onto the loop. They are not sliding their hand into the loop. Precautions. Abdominal surgery or aneurysm, advanced COPD, advanced cardiac disease, colostomy, fractures of the rib or back, recent back injury, pain, or severe osteoporosis. Resident refusal. If a resident refuses, then this means either the transfer doesn't happen or happens with the use of a lift. A few things to keep in mind before using a transfer belt on a resident. Their consent to use one is very important, and if they don't consent, use a mechanical lift. Application. Center the belt around the resident's waist with quick release buckles at center of the waist. Adjust the belt for a snug fit. You should be able to slide your open hand flat between belt and resident. Adjust the belt once the resident is standing. We all get skinnier when we stand up, so don't forget to readjust the belt once the resident is up. Grasp on hand loops to assist the resident to stand. Tips for transfers. Encourage resident to participate as much as possible at their pace. If a resident has a stronger side, transfer to that side. Do not allow resident to place arms or pull around the neck. Ensure proper footwear is worn by the resident and staff members. Ensure wheelchair locks are on, footrests are out of the way, and armrests are removed. Do not rotate or twist your spine. Adjust your feet instead. Never grasp or pull a resident under the arms. Consider what is happening in these photos. Do you still see this happening? Moving a resident up in bed. Do not use soaker pads or incontinence pads to boost someone up in bed. Proper use of the slider sheet is shown on the right. All slider sheets require a person on either side of the resident, and never pull from the top of the bed as shown on the left. Look at her body position. The slider sheet can be used to roll a resident in bed. Rolling a resident onto their side. What is wrong with this picture? Bed rail is up, arms are out, doing all the work, 
You're using your bacon instead of your bologna. He is lifting rather than sliding. Should have brought the resident close to him before rolling. He is not using the tool as it is intended to be used. And wrist should be in the supinated, palms up position, not in the prone, palms down position. Moving a resident to the side of the bed. You can see from the picture the workers are utilizing their lower body for force with a slightly squatted position. They have pulled the resident towards themselves. Note the supinated palms up position. They can use the draw sheet to help facilitate the roll. If there's not a draw sheet, place hands at the main joints like the shoulder and hip. Place the resident in the best position for turning. For example, either bending the leg closer to you, bending at the knee, or crossing over top of the other ankle. And communicate. One person should be designated as the lead and they communicate with the second person and with the resident. Moving a resident from lying to sitting. Position the resident on their side and close to the edge of the bed with the rails down. If possible, bend the resident's knees. Adjust bed to hip height and raise the head of the bed to 45 degrees or as much as tolerated with the bed rail up and already locked in position. Adjust the bed height so the resident is able to place their feet flat on the floor. Encourage the resident to move their legs to the side of the bed while holding the rails. The staff may be required to offer assistance with legs or with truck support. While the resident is holding onto the rail, they can use their other arm to push onto the head of the mattress to assume a seated position. This procedure is to be used to assist a patient from lying to sitting if it is determined that a mechanical lift is not appropriate. This procedure is recommended for a patient who is cooperative and is able to assist with sitting up. This technique cannot be used with a patient who has had a recent hip replacement. One or more trained caregivers are required for this procedure. Before assisting the patient from lying to sitting, position her close to the edge of the bed and turn her on her side with her knees bent. Explain the procedure to the patient. Ask the patient to help if possible. Ensure that the bed breaks are locked. Adjust the height of the bed to the upper thigh level of the shortest caregiver. Raise the head of the bed up to approximately 45 degrees. If the patient has hip or abdominal discomfort, you may need to reduce the amount of inclination of the head of the bed. Bring the patient's legs over the edge of the bed using a front-to-back weight shift. If needed, the patient's legs can be lowered against the thigh of the caregiver to reduce stress on her hips. Raise the head of the bed as much as possible. Stand between the shoulders and hips of the patient. Place one hand on the patient's hip and the other hand behind the patient's shoulder. Stand in a side-to-side -side weight shift position. If the patient is able to help, instruct her to place her uppermost hand onto the bed to allow her to push against the bed during the repositioning procedure. On the designated count, perform a side-to-side -side weight shift while pressing down on the patient's upper hip with one hand and guiding the patient up with the other hand, which is placed behind the patient's shoulder. Once the patient is in an upright seated position, ensure that she can sit independently or she will need to be stabilized. If the bed has split side rails, the side rail at the head of the bed can be raised so that the patient can hold onto it to stabilize herself. Lower the height of the bed to allow the patient's feet to rest flat on the floor. The patient's hips should be slightly higher than her knees to make it easier for her to stand. If the patient has limited trunk strength to sit independently or assist with the movement, a second caregiver may be required to assist. This caregiver should kneel on the bed directly behind the patient and place both hands on the patient's shoulders to assist with the movement. In summary, this procedure should be used to assist a patient from lying to sitting if it is determined that a mechanical lift is not appropriate. One or two trained caregivers are required. Raise the head of the bed as much as possible and use a side-to-side -side weight shift when assisting the patient to a sitting position. Ask the patient to assist as much as possible. Remember, Avoid rolling resident repetitively. Complete all care while in one position. Be able to access three sides of the bed. Move the bed from the wall or window if required. Structure your work so you don't have heavy cares one after the other. This practice avoids overloading your muscles. Make sure all equipment is accessible and follow the care plan and report any changes to your supervisor. This brings us to the end of the Safe Handling Mobility video on bed mobility and associated equipment. Please click below to continue on to a short quiz to receive your certificate for this online training. Thank you.